And traditionally, when a president visits a city in mourning, he meets with victims and families, doctors and nurses, police and other first responders. He praises their efforts, and most of all, he listens to those who've lost loved ones and adds what words of comfort he can. President Trump did that today in Dayton and El Paso, as is tradition, away from cameras, away from microphones. At least we have to assume that is exactly what he did. But we also, just moments ago, heard the President of the United States using some of his precious time to talk about himself and to attack an Ohio center and the mayor of Dayton. Somehow, for some reason, the president felt this was an appropriate venue to air his grievances and praise himself. The president spoke tonight shortly before leaving El Paso and where any other president might have put the victims first or the wounded or the first responders, this president's first words were about the love and respect he got in Ohio. We had an amazing day. As you know, we left Ohio, and uh, the love, the respect for the office of the presidency, uh, it was, I wish you could have been in there to see it. I wish you could have been in there. He wishes you could have been in there to see all the love and respect he got, the office of the presidency. He did not mention the dead in either city. They're 31, 22 in El Paso, 9 in Dayton. He didn't mention the wounded. He briefly nodded toward a first responder and said he looked forward to working with Democrats on, quote, getting something done in Washington, but he did not go into specifics on that. Where he did get very specific was when asked about his attacks today on some of his hosts in Dayton. But before we get to that, to quickly set the stage for that, here's what happened. According to Ohio Democratic Senator Sherrod Brown, he was well-received at the hospital there and, quote, did the right things. The president, he said, was comforting. Dayton's mayor, who we're going to talk to in a moment, adding, quote, I think the victims and the first responders were grateful that the president of the United States came to Dayton, which is precisely what you'd expect to be said of any president. Yet it wasn't praise enough for this president. So with the help of his social media director, he made it known. Dan Scavino tweeting, quote, some extremely powerful moments throughout the entire visit with so much enthusiasm and love, contrary to what the Trump-hating Dems would ever share or say, the president was treated like a rock star inside the hospital. The president was treated like a rock star inside the hospital. He also weighed, the president weighed in, saying, quote, just left Dayton, Ohio, where I met with the victims and families, law enforcement, medical staff, and first responders. It was a warm and wonderful visit, tremendous enthusiasm and even love. Then I saw failed presidential candidate 0%, Sherrod Brown and Mayor Whaley, totally misrepresenting what took place inside of the hospital. Their news conference after I left for El Paso was a fraud. As I said, the mayor is going to join us in a moment. And again, she had nothing bad to say about the visit, but the president wanted rock star and I guess had to settle for normal, decent human being and apparently nursed that grudge all day. Here's what he said about a few minutes ago. Well, they shouldn't be politicking. They, yeah, they shouldn't be politicking today. Uh, I had it with Sherrod Brown. Uh, he and the mayor, Nan Wally, uh, they asked uh, to go in. Could we possibly go in and make the tour with you? I said, yeah, let's do it. They couldn't believe what they saw, and they said it to people. We, they've never seen anything like it. The entire hospital, no different than what we had in El Paso, the entire hospital was, uh, I mean, everybody was so proud of the job they did because they did a great job. They did a great job here. And then I say goodbye. I took them in at their request. We made the tour. They couldn't believe it. She said it to people. He said it to people. I get on Air Force One, where they do have a lot of televisions. I turn on the television, and there they are saying, well, I don't know if it was appropriate for the president to be there, you know, et cetera, et cetera, you know, the same old line. And they're very dishonest people, and that's probably why he got, I think, about 0% that he failed as a presidential candidate. Was the president in El Paso? The president today also attacked Joe Biden, who had just criticized him. He did that on the way to El Paso, tweeting, "Quote: Watching sleepy Joe Biden making a speech so boring. The lamestream media will die in the ratings and clicks with this guy. It will be over for them. Not to mention the fact that our country will do poorly with him." So that's the president of the United States talking about cable news ratings and online clicks. That's what he was thinking about and openly tweeting about en route to a city where 22 people have been massacred in a racist attack. He said this just hours after claiming his words bring people together. There really are so many moments now when it's hard to know why we listen to anything the president says and take it at face value because inevitably he undercuts what he has been told to say 
moments later sometimes, or hours later, by revealing time and time again what he is really thinking about. The day began with these words from the president. No, I don't think my rhetoric has at all. I think my rhetoric is a very, uh, it brings people together. Well, he's right about that today in a certain sense. Here are a number of people his rhetoric brought together. Protesters in both cities holding signs, chanting, giving speeches against the language the president has used. There is simply no way to overstate how far from normal this is, or sadly at this point, how typical.